Right. Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to a new day. Uh, everyone can hear me okay? Just to make sure. Uh, it's possible. Yes, it's possible. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. Uh, be one of us. Nike, if you're available, can you please lead us in prayer? Or uh, Prabhakar? Yes. Or oh, Mangi is available. Go ahead, Mangi. Okay, thank you, Pastor. Lord Jesus. Thank you this morning, Lord. We pray for that you will be with us as, as, as we learn. Open our mind, open our heart, Lord, so that we may receive what you teach us this morning, Lord. And we pray, Jesus, that you empower Pastor Paul, Lord, with your Holy Spirit, Lord, so that you use him as your mouthpiece, Lord, to teach us this morning. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus, Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Maggie. All right. So um, we'll get into the next chapter. Last Yesterday, we looked at um, career growth, right? And we saw the importance of, uh, you know, God wants us to grow. God wants us to grow professionally. And that's his desire. And even as we pursue career growth, uh, it's important that we must no, uh, also work hard, prepare ourselves for career growth. All right, let's go to chapter 19, work-life balance. Right Now, in a time uh, where, you know, everyone are in this rat race of, you know, uh, growing up and becoming a successful you know, businessman or entrepreneur or, you know, just wanting to grow up the ladder and, um, in this chapter, we're going to learn about how we, as God's children, must maintain a balance between our professional life and our personal life. Now, this is a serious challenge, right? I've met a lot of people, uh, you know, young young, uh, young people, a few of them from our church, who are very, very well off, and very rich. Uh, parents are, you know, their own business and all of that. Uh, and a few of them came and told me, Pastor, I don't know if my father and mother even love me. I've not spent time with my father. I don't remember when was the last time, uh, you know, we just went out together. And this young man, he was probably about 20. He has enough money with him. Right? Uh, uh, but he was heartbroken. It, it looked like as if, you know, all the money was, you know, it, it doesn't mean anything to him. Uh, and you're in a time when we are at right now, people want to grow and grow and, you know, professionally, we want to do so many things, which is good. But it shouldn't be in a way that we are professionally, you know, just you know, growing and growing, but we don't, you know, we don't look after our family. So the Bible teaches us that we must maintain a balance, right? There's time for work. There's also family. And God has designed it that way, right? It's, I can't say I have to only work. And I, since I'm providing food for the table, that's enough. No. And nor can I say I don't really look after my family, but I won't work. So there has to be a balance, right? Uh, so what we'll do in this chapter is we look at certain practical recommendations or practical ideas, what the scriptures teach us, uh, in, in, in the way that we respond to the pressures of and demands of the workplace and, and in the family, right? Now, another important thing that I've also noticed is many you know, pastors or people in ministry, right, uh, their children, uh, they began to have this, they begin to have this aversion towards church. I know a couple of my friends itself. Their fathers are their father is a pastor, right? But the whole their whole life they've been in church, right? Um, every time it's church, probably you know the this one of my friend he has his house and next to the house is the church. So all the time you've got church people coming home with prayer requests and everything 
he did was for the church. Now, it is very good. He was zealous, passionate, but in that passion, he has only one son. Right? Uh, he forgot that you know he needs to maintain a balance. And my friend keeps telling me, you know, my my father was never there for any of my, yeah, you know, my school events. He was never there for from the time of, I could remember, maybe first standard onwards. I never seen him for anybody. He was never there for any sports day. He would send my mother for parent teacher meeting. Uh, he was never there. He was there for the church people, but he was never there for me. And this young man, he went into crowds and you know, just this resentment against church. He didn't have anything about against God, but he didn't like church. Now, whose fault was it? Uh, so, as believers, as people of God, we must know the importance. You know, many of us may not be married yet, or some of us are married with children. Um, and it's very important to learn these things. And I thank God that, you know, God is giving us the wisdom. God has given us the word that we can learn from it, right? So let's look at a few uh, practical uh, recommendations what the scripture teaches us on work-life balance. First point, maintain the rhythm of worship, work, and rest, right? It's a rhythm, right? So let's read Exodus chapter 20, 8 to 10. Uh, let's, yes, one of us can please read that. Exodus 20, 8 to 10. Exodus 20, 8 to 10. Exodus 20, 8 to 10. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Work six days and do everything you need to do. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to God. Your God, don't do any work. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Rabina. So God is telling the people of Israel. Now, I know that Monday, uh, you know, six days a week, you are working hard. You're traveling. You're setting up your tents. There's, there's a lot of things to do. You're working, right? Now, on the seventh day, do not work. Take rest. Right? And now, who's saying this? I'm just saying this. So God has commanded us to worship, to work, and to rest. Okay? Now, what we can do is maintain a daily or a weekly example. We wake up in the morning. This is just an example, right? And you can apply it to how, how you would uh, want to do it for your own lives. So you wake up in the morning. You have your own time, your personal time with God. Uh, then you know, okay, if it's school, uh, if you have children, you know, you've got to get them ready, you got to, uh, you know, uh, prepare them for school. Uh, so you, again, you have to be there for them. Then you, you know, have to drop them to school. Then you go to your office, finish your work, uh, pick up your children, come back home. Uh, and then you can set aside time, right? You know that, you know, you know that you work the whole day. You can probably spend time with your children and then later on take a rest. And so you you can you know set up a certain rhythm, right? Okay, this is how I'm going to do it. Right? If you feel that uh, you want to spend more time with the children at night, you can do that. Or if it's sometime in the evening, just after school, so you can work out your own rhythm. But here's the important thing: um, when we have this certain rhythm, right? You know, okay, I, I I spend time with God. Now I have my work, and then children. So you know. Right, I have children meaning family, right? And I'm spending. So when you do that, it automatically, you know, you, you get into this rhythm and it ensures that you avoid laziness and you avoid overworking. Right. So for example, there are there's a lot of tasks, right? A lot of projects coming in. But in your mind, we are like, okay, I know that I have a wife and children at home, so I gotta be there for them. Right, and so you you make the choice. You say, okay, you plan out your work. This is what I'm going to do. Now, yes, there will be times when you know the work demands are additional. You have to work extra hours to fulfill a project or an assignment that has been uh, you know given to you. Right. So, for example, in ministry, uh, I've mentioned this before. You know, during Christmas time or 
during Easter time. You know, we do a lot of programs, so we are not able to spend more time with our children. But after that season is over, get back to your regular rhythm, right? The rhythm that you had set up earlier on, whether it's a weekly rhythm, monthly rhythm, or uh, however you feel like, right? Daily, weekly, or monthly. Uh, but here's very, very, very important, and I urge you to have this set aside, right? Because sometimes in a bit to, you know, just this zeal for God, and we say, God, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this. We tend to neglect our family. Spoken to many pastors, wives who have said, you know, this usually happens in rural areas as well, and also in cities. But uh, a couple of pastors, wives who said, I don't know what my husband is doing. I don't know where he is. I know he's on ministry, but I don't know where he is. Sometimes he comes, sometimes he doesn't come. Uh, and this is a very sad state. Right? Uh, and that's not how God has called us to be. God has given us family, and we must ensure that we look after them in the right way. Right? So maintain that rhythm. Second point, be committed to what is important. Right, let's read. I'll read Mark chapter 12, 29 to 31. Jesus said, The first in importance is, listen, Israel, the Lord your God is one. So love the Lord your God with all your passion and prayer and intelligence and energy. And here is the second. Love others as well as you love yourself. There is no other commandment that ranks with these. Now, in order for us to maintain work, play, life balance, we must be committed to what is important, right? Uh, we must say, okay, God, first things first. The reason I have woken up this morning, the reason I have a job, the reason I have family, the reason you bless me with children, the reason I have this home or the things around me, this everything that I have is because of you. The Lord, your God, it is, it is he who has given it. So you give God the first priority. Now, I want to be careful. Because sometimes what we may say is, okay, I'm giving God first priority, and then second priority, family, third priority, uh, ministry. Or first priority, God, second priority, ministry, third, family. The, the wrong thing to say is, I will do God's work, God will look after my family. Right? I've heard many of them say that. That's wrong. Because God has entrusted you with the children. Right? So we have to look after our children. Yes, Lord is protecting, God is providing, God is looking after, He is our refuge and He is our protector. We know all of that. But God has entrusted them to us. So we must look after them. Right? So be committed to what is important. Work is important, family is important. Ministry also is important. So you always look at it this way. You've got God, right? Just picture this. You've got a circle. You've got God. And in that, you got ministry and family. Right? So it's not three separate circles. It's not first God, second family, or second ministry and third uh, family. No. You've got a big circle. That's God. Inside of that is ministry and family. Right? So be committed to what is important. All three of them are important. Right? But the, the word being committed means know that all three are important in the eyes of God. Third point, know what is important to you. Now, this is something that we must determine. Intangibles, like you know, personal work with God, family, meaningful relationships, are more important than money, professional success, and other accolades. Now imagine this, you've got an entrepreneur who's worked so hard, and uh, you know, for many, many years he's you know toiled and he started this business, and 20 years later he's extremely successful. The entire nation knows him, people call him from different countries, he's financially doing very well. But what about his family, his own family, 
don't respect him. They say, yeah, he is good. At, he is good at uh, business and making decisions and all of that. He is good in uh, entrepreneurial skills. He's got great knowledge about all of that. But he's zero in looking after his family. Right? And we don't want to hear that. Right? That would be a success in one thing and a failure in another thing. No, God has called us to be successful in every area. Right? Matthew six thirty three. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the other things shall be added to you. Right? So, no more is important. God, you are important. Work also is important. Family, very important. Right? Next point, understand the true value and have a value scale. This is interesting, right? True value of things. There are some things that are priceless and money cannot buy it. Right now, money is good. Money is important. It's a resource uh, uh, which we need for to start a business, to work, for everything. We need money. It's a good resource, right? But money cannot buy a happy home. Money cannot buy meaningful relationships. Imagine we worked so hard and then 20 years later you have a 20 year old or 25 year old son and you're trying to have a relationship with the son. And the son says, you know, that uh, it's too late for us to have a relationship. You weren't there for me when I was young, when I was in school or you were not there for my sports days, for my events. You don't even know what are my skills. Uh, you don't even know what class I am in or what grade. Uh, oh, you don't know my friends, who are my friends. Uh, but now this man has, you know, 20 years later, his business is extremely successful. He has all the money. He can't tell his son, son, I'll give you one lakh a month. Come sit with me and I'll talk and have, let's have a relationship. His son is going to say, no, it's all right. Why? Because money, can, money can't buy a relationship. Money can't earn a deep and intimate relationship with God too. You can't say, God, I'll give you uh, two lakhs a month uh, from my entire business. I'll give you two lakhs every month. Um, can we have a good relationship with each other? We can't say that. God is not interested in that. Money cannot buy peace and rest. Right? The peace that God gives us, money cannot buy. There are times when the richest of people will have sleepless nights because they're worried about the money. Or there's no rest. Will the stock market crash? Will that crash? Will my business go on? Will it stop? What if other people try to cheat me? Uh, and this whole thing of stress. But God is saying, understand the true value of things. What is more important? Is, is, is money or is relationship important? You know, I, I've done a lot of ministry in village areas when I was a young man, maybe about when I was in my early 20s. And these are true believers who've come to believe in the Lord Jesus from another faith. And you should see their heart. They have nothing. They just live in a tent. But they have a beautiful family, a beautiful home, a joyful home, small house, just a mud house, beautiful relationship between the husband and wife. Children love the parents, obedient children, working hard in the fields. Right? Whatever they, you know, whatever crops is, whatever is earned, they all put it together and they have a good time. Of course, there will be ups and downs, but they, they have a good relationship. Money can't buy that. So we must understand, uh, you know, when we are uh, going on in this life, looking for professional growth, growth career growth, uh, don't forget the intangibles, a relationship with God, an intimate relationship with family as well. That is something money cannot buy. Right? Uh, many times, me personally, I've looked back uh, you know, and I think, oh, I wish I could have done this. I wish I could have spent a little more time with, you know, uh, my children when they were three years 
four years old. Then what time? And really just of course I have spent, but I wish I could do some more. Now they're growing up, they're in school and all this. And, uh, but I always make it a point now to spend more time with them. And uh, there are times I just take off. I say, no, uh, you know, I tell the church, off. So uh, please avoid calling me for some time, unless it's you know a very emergent, very big emergency. Feel free to call me. Now, sometimes in ministry we feel, oh, that is wrong. How can we do that? No, it's not wrong. The balance in your life. You're saying, okay, I uh, I need to be there for my children. So sometimes I just switch off the phone in my off days. I switch it off, and I'm just there with the kids, just playing, being with them. And it's very important to do that because we're building a relationship, right? Keep important things important, right? Prioritizing family about money, success, profession, very important. There are times where we need to make tough choices. Uh, don't be afraid to say no, right? Uh, don't compromise. You know, I remember this one time. Uh, uh, there was this meeting that was scheduled. Um, and uh, I told the, the this is a pastor from another church from a different city. They said, uh, "Can you please come?" I said, "No, I can't come to this program. Sorry." Uh, he asked. He asked me why. I said, "Because uh, my family and I, my children are very small, maybe three years old." Um, I said, "My family and I are going for a family trip," uh, and so. So this other pastor got really upset. Family trip. There are people who are dying and going to hell, and you're going for a family trip. People don't have family. People don't have money for family trips, you know. And he made me feel really guilty. I said, I, "That's true, no? People are dying, going to hell. They need to know Jesus, and uh, people are suffering. There's persecution all around, and I family trips." And I thought to myself. Uh, I was really down. I said, yeah, how can I do that? But I thank God because, you know, while I was praying, the Lord ministered to me. And he said, this is your family. And your family is more important than anything in this world. Take care of your family. That's basically what the Holy Spirit just you know, told me. Take care of your family. So I had to call the pastor and say, I apologize. But I won't be there for this meeting. They didn't take it the right way, but I'm glad I did that because I've had a good time with my family, and my children. Uh, we, it, it was a good time of fellowship together. So that is more important than you know always doing the ministry. There will be times, right? Other times when people have called, we have gone, right? There are times I've been away from family for two weeks. We, we go on, uh, you know, Bible study. Uh, Bible colleges outside of you know, Bangalore or different cities, and we're there for two weeks or uh, so that's all right. But but what's important is you set your priorities, right? Keep important things important, set boundaries, have those times where you switch off the phone, stop checking emails, disengage from social media. I right? remember this uh, family. Uh, he, he's got two children, right? One is, I think, five, and the other one is seven. Uh, so this father, what he's done is, out of just love, but what he's done is, he's bought two small phones. Uh, so two small phones. And so when they cry, he gives one child one phone, like regular phones, right? Android phones. And if the other one cries, give the other one the phone. So all four of them have a phone. So the baby says, the child is crying, here you take the phone. The other child, okay, take this phone. And so now all are happy. The husband has a phone, the wife has a phone, and the two kids have a phone, and they all are sitting together in the same house. They probably, you know, nowadays. Uh, What's interesting is uh, you've got a family in the house, you've got a family WhatsApp group. And so they message each other when they are inside the house itself. And these are heights, right? Uh, and this is not what God wants, right? God is calling us to have a relationship. 
um, set boundaries. You know, there are times you can just just switch off, have your own time or have your family time. Right? Especially those in ministry, switch off. It's okay. Like you don't have to check your mails every time. If, if there are if there are times when I take two days off, it's a Friday. Uh, if, Sometimes I take a Friday off, so I've got Friday and Saturday, and I don't, don't check my emails, I don't check my phone, just keep it away. Um, just be there with the family, be there with the kids. Uh, maybe go outside, have a lunch or a dinner outside, come back, just, just you're just there available. What happens? The children will know that, hey, my parents, my father, my mother is there for me. And they're there. If, I, if there's anything, they can come and tell me. Even now, uh, you know, my son, he's six years old. He comes and tells me what happens in school. And he also tells me what he learned. And and it, he asks me whether is it right or wrong. Right? Uh, because he knows that, you know, dad, dad and mom will give him the right solution and will speak to him. So that's the kind of relationship we need to build. I'm not saying I'm the, the perfect parent here. Uh, but what I'm saying is, we must make that effort of having a relationship with, with our family members, right? Again, next point, family time. Set aside time for them, right? Uh, not just always thinking about work, work, or oh, I need to send this report, I need to send that report. And then we go for a, a family outing, we carry our laptops and go. And then in between, you know, your children are... Uh, and your family is in the swimming pool enjoying and where are you? We are sitting with a the laptop there. It doesn't feel like a holiday family time. Right? Maybe you can take your laptops to your family, uh, picnics and all of that. But after the children have slept and after you know you have a long day, good day with the family, then you can probably, if you have to send reports, check your mails, you can do that. Right? But you're not compromising time with that. Right? Uh, family is the most beautiful thing that we can have. Always remember this. Family is the most beautiful, you know, uh, relationship that God has given us. It's a beautiful thing. Simple ways that we can, simple things that we can do in families, express love, have time not only to discipline, but also have time to have fun. Right? Uh, well, when there is a need, you be there for them. Be involved in your children's studies and activities. Right? Pray together as a family. Beautiful. Take time for regular family vacations. Attend and serve the church together as a family. You know, last week I went to um, one of our church members' home. They have two children, one boy and a girl. And both of them are in their early 20s. So one is 24, one is 22. Or, uh, and they are young guys, young people. But one thing is they are always at church. Now their parents are working in Dubai, right? But these two children, brother and sister, they are always every Sunday at church, right? No matter what, he, they both are there at church. So recently their mother came from Dubai and so we went and visited them uh, here in Bangalore and uh, while we were talking I asked auntie, auntie what did you tell your children, what, what did you teach your children because you guys are in Dubai and as children they can avoid, you know, they can say I slept too late, uh, I slept late in the night so I couldn't get up in the morning, I have exams so I didn't come to church, there's so many excuses, right, or you know I'm not feeling too well. And another thing is they stay about 20 kilometers away from church. They catch a bus and come on. So I asked this auntie, what did you do to your children? That even when you're not there, they have set their priorities. One of them had, uh, you know, broken her, uh, the daughter had broken her feet, dislocated her feet. And that morning, while she was getting ready to church, she dislocated her feet. But she's come to church that morning. And she came and told me, oh, sir, I've dislocated my feet, but I've just got to go to the doctor's. So I said, why did you come? You should have taken rest at home. It's all right. She said, no, I don't. You know, church is important. So when I asked the mother, she said this. She said, 
as a family from the time they were two to three years old, we would sit together, read Bible verses, pray, and then we would tell them every Sunday why it is important to go to church. And they would make the kids, they were probably four or five years old as they were growing, make them to, you know, do something in the church, you know, clean the chairs, or if there's some paper falling down, they would tell, take that, throw it into that dustbin. And that has stayed on till now, where you know, they will not miss church. And it's wonderful. It's not only like, you know, like a routine, okay, I have to go to church, but they come, they serve in the church, they, they truly have a great, wonderful relationship with God. And, and it's so wonderful. So what we do in our initial time with our children, their family, is what will last later on. Right? So these are things that we must always remember. Imagine if we have, you know, all the money we buy, you know, all our, our children from an apartment and say, okay, this is yours, this is yours. The children are you know, not even happy with it. Say, you know, it doesn't really matter, you know, I can work and buy my own house. What I wanted was, I wanted you, I wanted to spend time with family, I wanted to go out uh, with my family. Uh, I wanted to go to church with my family, but I couldn't do that. We have failed in one area, but in the professional area, we've been extremely successful. In the family area, we have lost out. And so very important is family time. Keep short accounts, checks and balances. Mark chapter 6, verse 13 to 32. Yes, could one of us please read that? Mark 6, 13 to 32. Mark chapter 6, verse 30 to 32. Yes, any one of us? I'll read. The apostles returned and met with Jesus and told him all they had done and taught. There were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his disciples didn't even have time to eat. So he said to them, let us go off by ourselves to some place where we will be alone and you can rest a while. So they, start, so they started out in a boat by themselves to a lonely place. Amen. Thank you, Kennedy. Thank you, Kennedy. Now, look at this, how wonderful Jesus is teaching us something here. The, the apostles, Jesus had previously sent out the apostles and said, go and share about the good news, go in truth, go everywhere, go to Samaria, go to Judea, go wherever you go. And uh, if they accept you, you go and bless them. If they don't, shake off your dust off your feet and go. Now, the apostles have finished probably... Um, the, the, it's not mentioned how long, probably, say, for example, a two or a three week, one month of ministry and right? hard work. Right? Now, we know that many of the apostles had family, right? Now, uh, many of them, Peter was married and the others as well, would have had family, uh, uh, probably brothers, cousins, all of them. Now, they were away from them for a month or so, all of them doing ministry. They came back to Jesus and they told Jesus, okay, Jesus, we did what you told us. We went, we, we did the ministry, and we, come, we came back. Um, and at that time, there were many people coming to Jesus, and the, didn't, and the disciples didn't have even time to eat. But what does Jesus say here after that? He said, that, he said to them, let us go off by ourselves to some place where we will be alone, and you can rest for a while. So they started out in a boat by themselves to a lonely place. Now, the disciples didn't say, Jesus, we are tired. Can we go and rest somewhere? No, Jesus saw them. Saw that they had a tough week, tough month, a hard working month. May have been fruitful, but they worked hard away from family. They're tired physically, mentally as well. So Jesus says, okay, people, these people will keep coming to them. This will never stop, but let's take time off. 
Let's just go away alone and be with ourselves. Now, what is it that we can learn? There will be times in our work, maybe business or workplace, uh, ministry, where we have to put in those additional hours and work for extended periods of time. Sometimes we may be away from family for one week, two weeks, three weeks, a month, or even more than a month, right? Sometimes it's business travel, sometimes it's ministry travel. So we'll have, we'll have to go, and we'll have to do it. Right? We'll have to be away from family. But what is important is we have to keep an account. We need to check uh, whether we are balancing out what we are doing. So when you return back from a long uh, work period, like, you know, especially when you've traveled or ministry, you've traveled, you've come back, balance out. Very important. Spend time, additional time with family. You know that two weeks you were not with them. So you need to catch up on two weeks. Right? Uh, you know, when I was traveling, my, uh, my elder one was learning to talk. He was probably about two years old. Or, so he was learning to talk and learning to, you know, new toys and all of it. And it's very difficult, right? Especially when you have small children and you know, you're know going away for two weeks or three weeks. Uh, there was this time I went out for two weeks. You know, two weeks I was not there, but you know, in this day of uh, in this time of you know, where we have WhatsApp video and all of that, so that's good, you know, you can just get in touch, but nothing like being there. Uh, but those two weeks, and after I came back. I just applied for a couple of days off and I remember spending the whole time with my family. You know, caught up on those two weeks, okay, you know, with the kids, because they're just little, but then I, you know, asked them, what are the toys you, what are the games you learned, or what are, what are, what are the things you learned in your preschool, in the daycare, uh, you know, uh, what did you eat? And it, it, basically, you're just catching up on those two. Imagine I come back after two weeks of, Next day, they say, uh, Pastor, can you please come for house visit and you know, pray for this? And then again, you're running. What's happening? You, know, you just came back from two weeks of ministry. Now again, we're running to the family will feel neglected. Try as much as possible to be available for them. Keep short checks, keep balances, see what you're doing, think about what you're doing. The mistake that I made, luckily I was not bad at that time, but the mistake that I made when I just became a believer was whoever called, whenever they called, I would go. Whoever it is, whenever it is, or wherever it is, you know, you, I would start the bike and go. And only later on I realized that, hey, I have parents, I have brothers, so I need to be available for them as well. I need to see uh, what are their needs. I need to, you know, build a relationship with them. I, I know that you know, my parents are getting old. I need to be there for them. Uh, I, I've got, you know, other cousins and relatives. I would miss all our family times, you know, family reunions. I would miss all of them because somewhere in ministry I'll be. And only later on I realized that it's not wrong to say no. Right? Or this, it's not wrong to postpone. Uh, and so keep balances. Check, uh, uh, check up on your life, right? Um, I love what Paul writes with Timothy. If, um, if somebody does not look, know how to look after his family, how will he be able to look after the house of God? Right? Simple. Uh, if you can't look after your own family, how will you look after the house of God? Now, there are times when we are able to look after the house of God very well, but the family, we don't want to look after. Right? Um, you know, I, I think I've used this example once when this wonderful pastor of a big church, it's just a story, but not a real story, just to prove a point. Wonderful pastor, big church, preached a wonderful sermon, came off that stage and, and the women of the church came to the pastor's wife and said, oh, what a wonderful man of God. Your husband is, he did such a wonderful sermon he preached and the Holy Spirit has spoken to me so powerfully. But the woman was visibly not impressed. So the woman asked, what's wrong? Are you not happy that your husband is a great pastor, great pioneer of the ministry and all of it? She said, yeah, no, I'm happy that he's doing this, but I hope 
that pulpit was also at home. Because the moment he gets off that pulpit and goes home, he's a completely different person. Right? That's not how uh, we must be. We must be the same on the pulpit and off the pulpit as well. Right? As leaders, setting an example. Right? Guard your resources, which is your time, energy, and your money. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5, 15 to 17. So be careful how you live. Do not live like ignorant people, but like wise people. Make good use of every opportunity you have because these days are evil. Don't be fools then, but try to find out what the Lord wants you to do. Now remember, that these resources, time, energy, and money are given to us by God, and we must avoid wasting it. Guard against things that drain your time and energy and money. Right? Sometimes we drain our energy on the wrong things. Right? We, we waste our time on the wrong things. Right? Uh, the Lord Jesus, he was a great teacher, yet he avoided getting into meaningless debates. Right? He did not really just want to argue. Remember what Jesus did? He said, before Abraham, the Pharisees and all have come there and he says, before Abraham was, I am. He said, how can it be? How, how is it possible if Abraham was born hundreds of years ago? How can it be? He didn't go to explain all of this. He said, that's the truth, what I'm telling you. Uh, now, if you're not going to believe it, I'm not going to sit and have a debate. Uh, well, you know, why, and, uh, why before Abraham was I? No. He just walked away. They took stones to kill him, but he just walked away. Right? He did not perform miracles for those who came challenging him to prove, them, prove himself. Right? Remember when Jesus was even on the cross, he said, if you are the Messiah, you get down and we will believe you. Get down from the cross, we will believe you. He didn't want to prove himself. I don't have to prove myself. Just because here I'm dying on a cross doesn't mean I'm not the Messiah. That's what I've come for. At his trial, he did not waste himself, waste his time giving a defense. Remember Pilate, what did he say? Who are you? They're all calling you the king. Are you the king? He doesn't respond. Uh, tell me who are you? He doesn't respond. Again, to the Pharisees and the, and the Sadducees, they're saying, tell us who you are. Are you the Messiah? He doesn't respond. He, he, he doesn't want to give a defense. It was a meaningless defense. Sometimes there are things that are called energy leaks. Right? That is what? When we don't mind our own business, getting involved in things that others are doing. It becomes an energy uh, leak in our life. And let's look at it in the corporate sector. You've got a big task ahead, you've got a project assignment, you're doing that, you've got long work hours, so okay, you have to work, uh, then you've got family, you've got to go home, you've got wife and your children waiting there, you've got to spend time with them as well, so you know it's a long day. So you reach office, you begin your work, now imagine, during the break time, instead of taking time and just resting and, you know, resting your mind, resting your eyes and uh, all of that, you begin to talk to your friends and say, hey, you know what happened to this family? You know, what happened to his, his uh, you know, house? You know, what happened to his, this, this guy's uh, car? You know, what happened? We're talking all about other things. What is happening? We are not get, we are not minding our own business. We are only wasting our energy. It's not going to help us at all, right? What about ministry? We know, okay, we got a long thing, long uh, day. We got people to visit, pray for. We need to be spiritually strong. But what if we go to a house visit and then they're talking about, you know, the reason for the house visit is to pray and to, uh, you know, spend time together and fellowship together. Uh, but then if you go to a house and then they're talking about this pastor, they're talking about what happened 10 years back, and then you're sitting and listening to that, and then you get involved in it. It's all energy leaks. Many a times I've gone for house visits and I, you know, especially the older folks, they start talking about what happened 10 years back, 15 years back, 
how the churches were, how the... so I tell them, Auntie, is, is it okay if we don't worry about all that? Let's just, you know, study the word, pray, uh, look at what we can do as a church right now. And uh, sometimes older people, they like to talk and talk. And talk. So we, it's all right. They may feel bad, it's all right. You, you tell them as a leader, these are things we must do, we must not waste our energy, right? Overreacting to situations, right? Distractions like social media, browsing, texting, these are all uh, additional distractions. Now, social media, for those of us who are working in that field, you have to go, yeah, but then you take time off, right? You don't have to always, you know, you've got a 10 minute break. It's not like you have to go on Facebook and see who has liked up your picture or who's, uh, you know, uh, or Instagram and see who has, you know, posted what. Sometimes you just need to rest. Right? Don't worry about that. There will come a time you can, you know, see all of those things. So these become distractions. It becomes an energy leak. Spending time gossiping with colleagues, this is a big energy leak. Gossiping will only cause us to become weak. Our mouth will pain, our head will pain. Why? Because we're only thinking about others and what they are doing and their failures. Overcrowding your life with unnecessary activities, uh, an activity that has not been delegated uh, uh, or activities that can be delegated to others. Now, let me give you this example. When we started church, we were about eight to 10 people. So as a leader, I had to do everything, right? So I would come, I would open the church, I would set up the cables, I would connect the instruments, then I would, you know, just briefly, just roughly wipe up the chairs. I would switch on the laptop for the PPT, add the songs and put in the announcements, uh, have the PPT ready, then, uh, you know, if it was communion Sunday, I would, you know, put the wafers, make the Lord's table, the elements ready, uh, keep it all on the table, you know, put the room freshener in and, uh, you know, make sure the speakers are working, do everything. Now we were 10 people, right? Uh, but as we began to grow, right, I realized I, I, I began to delegate. I so, saw, okay, some youth are there, they're regular. So I said, okay, you look after the media team. So PPT, opening, you know, opening the lyrics, doing all that is your responsibility. And I said, I gave a few of our trusted church members the key, church key. I said, okay, your responsibility is to open the church, set up the chairs, put the room freshener. And so I began to feel a little more free on Sundays in the sense that I know that I have to come. So my mind is not crowded. Okay, I have to do this, I have to do this. I know, okay, when I get up, okay, this person is going to open the church, the PPT is going to be ready, the song lyrics are going to be ready. All I need to do is go uh, begin with the prayer and then begin with the worship, right? And, and the same thing with our workplace, right? If there are things that we can delegate, small responsibilities, just delegate. It's all right, right? I don't overcrowd your life. So. Uh, what is important is we must stay focused, stay in the center of God's plan. Right? Uh, uh, do not take on things that God does not want you to be doing. I remember this, I close with this example, right? Uh, there's this one man, young man, uh, and, and he was, you know, uh, he, he's doing his engineering and all of it. And, um, he was, you know, studying really hard and all of that. And he came up to me and he said, Pastor, I'm very stressed. I'm very tired. So what's the matter? Why, uh, you know, why aren't you sleeping? Are you not able to get sleep at night? He said, no, I just feel stressed all the time. Even after waking up in the morning, I feel like I'm so tired, like I haven't slept. I said, okay, you pray. God, God is the one who gives us good sleep, good rest. And that's very important. Then later on, he told me that he started you know, investing in these bitcoins or, uh, you know, on the phone where you can, I, I have no idea what those things are, but they invest on certain shares and, you know, they keep checking all of it. But then I told him, is this really necessary as a student? You know, you've got your studies, which is plenty enough. 
and now you're stressing yourself out whether the share market is up or down and all of it. That's why you're not able to sleep at night. Delete that app, take back your money, and just concentrate on your studies because this is wasting your time. And you know that was the suggestion that I gave him. But uh, you know sometimes uh, we do things that is not what you know God does not want to do it, and then we overcrowd our life and we get stressed out. So, uh, so important. Know that work and family and God they're all equal in the eyes of God. Right, everything is important. Right, uh, we've come, uh, our time is up, so uh, let's just quickly close in prayer. Uh, Abhinas, can you please close in prayer for us? Yeah, sure, Pastor. Yeah, thank so you. let's thank pray. Uh, our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful time. We thank you for the time of learning, Father God. Thank you, Father God, that you are equipping us, Father God, for the ministry, Lord. Thank you, Father God, that you are giving giving us the deep insights, Father God, that what 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 does says about our life, Father God? What says the family? What says the business, Father God? And what says the money and time, Lord Jesus? Father God, as we are growing, Father God, as we are learning, Lord Jesus, help us to, Father God, not just hear it, Father God, but help us to do it also, Father God. We pray that, Lord Jesus, Father God, that your grace is enough for us. We know, Father God, and as we, Lord Jesus, spending time in your presence, Father God, we ask you, Father God, lead us and guide us with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We submit, Pastor, to your mighty hand. We submit all the students to your mighty hand, Jesus. And we ask this prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. God Amen. bless you. Amen. Thank you, Avinas. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful week ahead. We'll catch up next week. Uh, God bless you all. Bye now.